Hey guys, I've been so, so busy that I haven't been able to even get a video made. But anyway, uh, I figured I'd show you this, those of you who are watching the hydroponic stuff. Now, you can see that I have a pepper plant there, and it was under the grow light, and I put four of them in this bucket just to transport them. Um, excuse the camera. Just to transport them. And I just want to show you the temps are kind of crazy. It's like 42. I don't know if you can see that. 42 degrees. Come on, bullseye. <clears throat> it's 42 degrees out today. Overcast, sort of partially foggy or whatever. It was raining and it stopped. But I just want to show you how I put these plants physically into the grow buckets. For those of you who have never done it and would, you know, want to see, because I know for me, I'm a hands-on learner myself. Here, boy. Come on in here. Come on. Come on, hurry up. <sighs> well, you can see that my cabbage are going wild. I don't think that there's any cabbage plants like this anywhere in the rest of Pennsylvania. <laughs> but, let me put my... Okay, shut that heater off for a little bit, and I want to uh, just sort of zoom in here on what I actually do. I have some tomato plants laying there alongside the buckets. Um, yeah, these tomato plants here I brought out of the office because they were getting so big, and I usually give these away to somebody. I always plant more than I need because I want to make sure that I have a good choice of tomato plant when I'm ready to do the job. But anyway, what I do here is, here's the pepper, and all I do, I don't know, you probably can't see this one very good, but all I do is sort of make a hole in the uh, perlite. I use that handle to pull the hole open. <coughs> and basically squeeze the cup, pull the plant out, and drop it right in there. And I'll just plant it as if you're pushing it into dirt. And I'll push down a little bit on it. Make sure the plant's standing up nice. And then what I'll do is, this is the hydroponic uh, water with the chemicals in four peppers. Now the pepper plant takes some different stuff. I'm putting pretty much water in here because this bucket is uh, the Dutch buckets keep watering them down to here, you know where the pipe are, but the problem with this is that um, it's very dry in there, so um, I want to actually fill the bucket so it starts to bring some water out, and so that this plant makes it and doesn't put to too much shock. So anyway, that's one. You can see how I do that should be a little bit closer up. So I basically pull, pull the perlite to the side, make a little bit of a hole there, the best I can. And uh, I had watered these plants just the other day, so they're sort of wetter than I like them. Usually you can pull them out, and instead of that much, you usually get the whole cup size of what you're looking for, but you didn't quite get that. But these will be fine. The plants are nice and healthy, that's the good thing about them. And then again I water that good. Because it won't take much for the perlite to pull whatever liquid was around the perlite that came with the plant. It won't take much for that dry perlite around there to pull that water away from there. <coughs> So now I have 10 tomato plants that I'm actually doing in my hydroponic setup, as well as um, 10 pepper plants. And I don't know if I've said this on camera before or not, but you can believe this if you want to or not, but those tomato plants last year 
or not not those, but uh, you know, new tomato plants grew, and this is why I built this greenhouse 12 foot tall. They grew as high as the building, and I had gotten um, 500 uh, tomatoes. Now this includes cherry tomatoes and everything. I just count tomato as a tomato for now, but I've actually got five, uh, 500 tomatoes from one plant. Yes, you heard me. 500 tomatoes from one plant. Altogether, I have gotten, last year my harvest of tomatoes was 5,000 tomatoes. And I didn't even let the ones that were green grow all the way because I didn't have heat where I had them before. And I really didn't have the ability to keep them alive as the temperature were dipping dipping and diving. So I hope you can see that. Basically that's all there is to it. That's the tomato plant, or I mean the pepper plant. So um, I'm going to add water to that. So just make sure there's a good amount of water in there. If water comes out of the uh, pipe, you pretty much know that you're, you have the Dutch bucket as full as it needs to be. Which I'm pretty sure these are not. So, so any of you, anyway, those of you guys who are watching, and the pepper plants, just to give you an idea of what the pepper plant production was, over the past three years that I've been doing this, the peppers themselves, because I use all the tomatoes. I only give some tomatoes to the neighbors and stuff who come around, but normally I, with my wife and I can them. So we have a pretty good load of canned tomato stuff. Well, we eat a lot of tomatoes, a lot of tomato soup and all that in the winter. But yeah, you can see the water coming out there. So that first bucket right here is full up to the pipe here. That's why the water's dripping out, which is a good sign because the plants will seek that water that's down at the bottom and then they'll always have food. Uh, getting back to, yeah, what was I saying? The tomatoes we usually can, oh, I know what I was saying, the peppers, these pepper plants got to the point where if you were to sell a pepper for a dollar a pepper, over the last three years, the pepper plant has paid for the shell of this greenhouse. So it cost me around, um, I think, $1,800 altogether to pay for this uh, greenhouse at the stage that it's at because it's more than a greenhouse. But the point is is that that's how many things I grew on these plants and it's unbelievable how they're going to grow. You'll, you'll see it. I mean if you, if you don't even notice the difference, I mean if you look, even with the cabbage and all, they're unbelievable. I mean these cabbage were nowhere near this size. In fact, um, if you remember this one that had died on me, that's the size of the plants when I basically brought them out, maybe twice that size. And you can see that those plants are huge compared to this. So, yeah, they're looking good. The broccoli over there at the end is going crazy on me. And uh, one of the things I was looking at the other day, and I don't know how this is going to work out, but I think what I'm going to do is right about in this area I'm going to put a hanger along this part of the building and the south side and I'm going to put a pipe in there and I'm going to hydroponically grow strawberries. I want to see how they're going to work. So that would be um, down this wall and then I'll come across this wall and end the pipe somewhere but they'll, it'll be out of my way. It won't be in the way of me walking around because I you know, when you get a little bit older, like I am, I've done a lot of things in my life, but, you know, you tend to trip and fall easily, and you want to be careful, so, and, you know, that's what I'm trying to do, give myself a nice, safe hobby, keep me away from danger. <laughs> but, yeah, that's what has happened in the past. Now, I never know how the tomato plants are going to do, and don't forget, like I said, out of that 5,000 tomatoes, there was a lot of cherry tomatoes, you know. I think that there might be two or three plants and I really should keep track of that but I don't because I just want them to grow and this is usually one of these fast things you've got to get it going as quick as you can. So 
I mean, you can see how nice the peppers grew. First, I had them in the seed pods. They're, they still have that wool uh, cup around them. First, I put them in the seed pods. Then I put them in a cup, or, you know, a red cup. And I watered them every maybe four days or five days, depends. As they grow bigger, they use more water. And now I'm putting them out here. So, uh, and also you can see I have some lettuce here. I grew that from a seed uh, about, I guess, about three weeks, two weeks ago. Now that's already been cut. This lettuce has been cut already by my wife. She picks and chooses what she wants, and uh, we just leave them grow. So when they stop growing, then I'll go ahead and put some more seeds in there and plant more lettuce. So we just grab that as we want to. All right, guys. Well, that's it. This video has been long enough. Uh, have a good one. Talk to you later.